A little bit about me and how weaving fits into my arts practice. I began weaving as part of a photography project that I was working on in Falls Hill in Coventry. Falls Hill is an area where the ribbon weaving industry thrived and as part of my project I was really interested in learning about the history behind the craft. Whilst working on that project I actually discovered that my great-grandmother was a weaver and she would weave utilitarian objects and make a living from them. It became this very poignant part of my practice to be able to learn this and almost discover this hidden history of craft that was in my own family. When I am doing a project that involves weaving in some way, often it is about the community or often it's about bringing people together because a lot of weaving history is dated back to this idea of how communities come together. I will often go out, take photographs of certain communities and print those photographs onto photographic paper and strip those down. And this whole manipulation of putting the image back together with these strips is a process that I find quite intriguing. Often my woven pieces do take the form of these immersive installations and I'm always encouraging people to use these as backdrops, walk on the piece and almost photograph yourself against them. I find it quite interesting that the weave can become where it is situated so a lot of the time you'll see that I'm making a lot of woven pieces that are going out into the community rather than just gallery spaces and I think that's a important part of my practice that my work is seen by the people the work is about. Practicing weaving has become one thing that I can share with so many different people who come from many different walks of life. I just recently completed a workshop that was part of the Mental Health and Wellbeing Week for a organisation and the conversations that came up in those sessions are one of the main reasons why I love to do weaving with so many different people for so many different reasons. This idea of how weaving as a form of therapy can actually be something that connects with a lot of people but also helps them in some way. And this idea of learning something new that also helps you but at the end you get to make such a lovely piece out of is one of the reasons why I find weaving to be so beneficial. To start with, we're going to cut up strips of paper to create our woven pieces. Cut up one centimetre wide strips from your chosen material. Here I've used my photographs from my Full Danny series, which are currently on exhibit at the New Art Gallery, Walsall. You can choose to cut your strips a little thicker than this or a little thinner than this. However, I do recommend as a first time weaver to cut the strips as thick as possible as it'll be easier for you to manage. I've cut up 36 strips of paper from an A3 size photograph to give my strips extra length. It's up to you what size you use, but make sure you keep at the same size paper for each woven piece to avoid any shorter or longer pieces. So, step one, place four strips vertically in front of you. This forms the warp, one of the two components used in weaving. Step two, you take a strip to weave in horizontally. This starts to form the weft. The warp and the weft are the two basic components used in weaving to turn thread or yarn into fabric. So together the warp and the weft are woven together to form your final product. The weft strips will go in over the first strip, under the second, over the third and finally under the fourth. You have now woven your first strip. Step 3. You repeat the same action with the following strips, but remember to alternate the pattern. As we began going over the first strip, you will now go under the first, over the second, under the third and over the fourth. Step four, continue to repeat this pattern, making sure you are always alternating. If you don't, you'll find that your strips will fall apart. Tighten your strips as you go along to avoid any gaps. Now, continue to add a strip into the warp and weft to ensure that you have an even number of strips on both sides. It may help to turn the piece around so that you are continuously adding strips on both sides. Step 5. I have continued my pattern ending with 16 strips on both the warp and the weft. Step 6. 
Turn over your woven piece and tape the back to ensure that the strips don't fall out of the edges. Step 7. Cut along the edges to remove the extra strips. This is optional and you may choose not to cut these, cut them in a pattern or cut them in a neat line a little similar to what I have done. Step 8. Your finished woven piece. This piece can be used as a placemat mounted onto some card or even framed behind glass. Once you understand the basics of weaving under and over, you can play around and experiment with thicker and thinner strips, longer and shorter strips, or various different colour paper and plain paper strips. Now that you've mastered the under or over strip, you can play around and experiment with different patterns when it comes to weaving a piece together. As you can see in this diagram, I am weaving two over, two under, two over and carrying on that same pattern while alternating the strips. At the end of this piece, I'll also end up with a woven design which will be a little different to the original under over that we've practiced but also because the pattern is alternating and I am continuing it with an even amount of strips, I'll be able to have a woven piece that holds together just like my original piece. There are many different forms of designs that you can practice, whether it's alternating between two strips over and under, three strips under, one strip over. You can experiment with different kind of designs that ensure you end up with a completely different pattern at the end. I find that with a lot of the photographs that I weave together, there are some photographs that I want certain areas to pop out a lot more than the others. So I'll try to weave a design so that there are certain elements of my image that are always over, whereas the other elements are under. You start to play around with a lot of different designs once you get the hang of making sure that you can get a piece to stick together. So I would recommend that you try out different designs that you can do. One of the best ways to create your own design is to draw it out on squared paper. So if you get a piece of squared paper, choose either two different colours or a plain square and a coloured square, you can start colouring in the coloured squares that would be your warp or the coloured squares would be your weft and you create a design which you can then implement onto paper and just follow the diagrams that you've drawn.